Welcome to something to wrestle with. Something to wrestle with. Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. Well, you know. That's not so, a um, Meltzer would write this. WWF itself on its online site heavily publicized the fact the title change was taped and would air. So they felt that fans being told in advance the title change was taped and was going to appear would boost their ratings on a very competitive night. Of course, this is happening not only when Goldberg and Nash are having their Starcade rematch at the Georgia Dome, but it's also the college football championship game. All three of these are head to head. This is sort of interesting to me because Meltzer would write during the show on two occasions, the chimpanzees running WCW told Shivani to say that raw was taped and that Foley would be winning the title on the opposition show. So don't switch channels. Nitro was beyond awful. He was telling people there's a world title change. that's going to happen on the other channel who runs this circus. He also knocked Foley laughing about a company that would make him champ, which isn't going to help Shivani's rep with wrestling fans since Foley is so universally respected. WWF shot back when they heard what was being said, since even though the show was taped, the commentary is done live and said they weren't going to present a main event that starts two minutes before the show and goes off the air and consists of nothing but walking and talking. So somebody is doing the the commentary here live. You're not producing the commentary live. You don't think? No, no. Vince was. By the Vince way, was there in the studio, probably Vince and Kevin Dunn, but, uh, they would have did. They were the ones that were always there live. I was there. I just let them do it because hey. it's <laughs> Vince is there. It doesn't matter. What, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did you talk to Foley about Shivani's comments? Because I know they hurt his feelings. I know he called Shivani and tried to talk to him about the comments. No, not that I, not then I have subsequently over the years. And I think that they did hurt his feelings initially, but after a while, I think that he was vindicated in the rating that came back and the end result after everything was all said and done. And I, I know you'll, you'll scream bullshit, but there was a bigger concern with the national championship than there was with nitro. As far as we were beating, we were beating them on a regular basis at this time. I mean, there was no looking back. Yeah. We were beating them with tape shows and live shows. So if there was any concern as to what else was on TV, it was the national championship more than, more than nitro. So when you're planning this title switch, you know, we're up against a big match on nitro and the national title game. We need a big show. Let's pull out all the stops. Really didn't give a shit what was on nitro. Uh, wouldn't have had that, but we did have like the big games and things like that. You had national championships, Super Bowl, and you always had the Monday night uh, football schedule. You had the whole football schedule that was always in our books, so you knew what markets uh, had were hosting, who was at home, and you didn't want to run events there, um, or you didn't want to be there if they were playing a big team, shit like that. But your national championships, your big games like that we would program against that and keep that in mind. Uh, that was for house shows and, and television. Meltzer would write the WWF solidly won the title match head to head battle as most of mankind and rock did a 5.9 to the Hogan Nash match only doing a 4.6 WCW did gain a slight bit of moral satisfaction because of its overrun. When Goldberg showed up. It picked up the ratings to a 6.5 while the Steve Austin run in and title finish and post-match celebration fell to a 5.1. However, the WWF won all eight quarter hours with WCW only coming close for the quarter where Nash and Flair were out there setting up the Nash Hogan match. And then Hogan returned with his first interview doing a 5.1 while the WWF did a 5.2 for Godfather versus test. The biggest advantage point was a 6.2 for the match we're watching right now, road dog and Al snow. And that was up against diamond Dallas page and Brian Adams, which did a 4.1. And it came immediately after Eric Bischoff ordered Tony Schiavone to give away the title change and emphasize it while WWF was going to win the ratings handily either way, based on viewing patterns, it appears that that announcement led to approximately 375,000 homes switching to raw, which is exactly the opposite of what it was designed to do. And exactly what anyone with half a brain would have predicted it would do. Your thoughts? 
Well, I, I happen to agree with that. I, you know, I go back and I think about <laughs> how competitive those times were and reactionary a lot of times that things would be that had, could you imagine what the fuck would have happened if we were able to know what the rating was at any given time live? Can you imagine if, if they actually had that? And there was a deal on direct TV many, many years after this where on direct TV, you could see how many people were tuning in and how many people were tuning out of your program live as it took place. They don't do it anymore, but, uh, they did. You could see that. And of course that's only for direct TV. So it's just a sampling of the audience, but it did give you an idea of if you had a bunch of people tuning out, where they were going during the commercial breaks and when they were coming back. So I think back, if God, if you had the ability to know, okay, wait a minute, people are watching this match. They're tuning out. God damn it. Do something else. That's how crazy it would have been. If they would have known ratings live is all this shit was taking place. I couldn't imagine what Vince would do and how he would overanalyze that kind of shit. Let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the whole announcement because Tony Schiavone ha- has gotten a ton of shit for a long time because of that, that call, huh? That's going to put some butts on the seats. And Meltzer even said a week after the ire addressed at Shivani should be ridicule addressed at Bischoff for calling the shot. And most people believe that Bischoff told Tony to make that call, but in reality, it was Annette Yothers delivering a message from Eric Bischoff. She comes down to see Tony at ringside and says, Eric wants you to shit on cactus winning the belt. And he said, what do you mean? And she said, Eric wants something you to say something that their show's taped and cactus is going to win the belt. So just really shit on it. But the whole butts in the seats line specifically is Tony freestyling, but the order to shit on it came directly from Bischoff through Annette Yothers. Did you ever talk to Eric about that decision? Because a lot of people would say that that finger poke of doom and you know, everything that went with it creatively, plus this whole butts on the seats thing was really the beginning of the end. I think it was, I mean, the, the end was coming anyway. It was on the downhill slope, regardless at that time, they, they just weren't doing anything to take the momentum back the other way. When you look at all the decisions at that time, Eric has to, has to take it all. I mean, if he was the one that was making the decisions and he was the one that was making the final approval for whatever matches and finishes were going on. And if he was the one delivering me, it's not a net Yoder's decision. That's of course not. the fuck. Now you're, you're killing the messenger. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, but that. no, I'm, I'm saying that to even, to even suggest, well, it was the net Yoder's that, that gave it to him. And it wasn't, you know, it was, it was a note sent by Eric and it was delivered by Tony. And if Tony had the leeway in how he was going to deliver it, then maybe he, not the best decision and how he delivered it. Not the best. Uh, what, well, but that's my thing is what, if, if the order from Annette is Eric says shit on it, what's he supposed to say? What, what could he have said? I think, uh, again, you can say a whole lot of things. It's give me an example that, but, but at that, you can say exactly what he did. You can say anything along the lines of, uh, cactus Jack used to be here and, and, demean him that way, whatever they want to do. My point is Tony was doing what he was told. Tony has a job as as a commentator and he's going to follow the orders of the executive producer. The, uh, the shows here, this is directly from the observer. The shows peaked in the overrun with a combined 11.6 rating, the quarter hour combined for a record audience of 8,099,000 homes, which was set between 10 and 10, 15. When Raw had Triple H versus Mankind with Shane as the ref and the Terry Runnels angle of 5.7 rating going against WCW, which had Conan versus Steiner and a TV title bout for a 5.07 or a combined 10.77 rating. These records are actually mind blowing when you figure that these shows both went against the Fiesta Bowl that determined the college football national championship, which did an incredible 17.18 rating 
and a 26.4 share numbers considerably higher than Monday night football was drawing in that same time slot, which is pretty crazy because we know that football is certainly going to hurt the wrestling rating. What could it have been if there wasn't a championship game? It's pretty crazy to think about. Yeah. And the, there weren't plus threes then either. And it wasn't taken into consideration. I don't think we even had DVRs at that time, taking into consideration people taping it now and watching it later. Damn college football bullshit. <laughs> 